merch fab. This is part eight on the mongrel build. So I've been like really looking at this shell over the last few days and how deep all the rust is in it and finding all these little pin holes and I did actually start looking for another shell just because the time it's going to take to do all these repairs it would be quicker to just get a better shell and uh, stick another one on and start again but I came to the decision that if I didn't do something with this car then none of those cars in those fields will, will probably ever get out and also me doing all these repairs is going to be more interesting content than it would be for me than if I was to film you know cutting all this back off finding another shell and just then repeating what I've already done so I just decided to stop moaning and just get on with fixing it but it is definitely uh, you know a lot of the rust is, is deep in there um, so I'm going to cut all of this out cut all the way around here cut all this off because it's all rotten in the back here so yeah I'm, I'm pretty gutted about all this because it's just so time consuming to, uh, to fix it all but um, I'll just keep plugging away until it's done So what I'm planning on doing is making one panel that's going to cover, go from here, up here, follow this up, connect onto this original little piece here, and then have a folded edge on the top, which will run up in line with that, up to wherever it comes up to on here. And then from that folded edge, we can put a flat plate in here, which then this will come down to. Yeah, and then once I've got this panel on here, I'll have to make a little extension, because I've actually, if I hadn't cut this back, if I'd left an extra 20 mil on here, I would have been able to just join this panel straight to that, but because originally I was gonna be using what was left on here, that would have been in the way, but yeah, it is what it is. Alright, so there's a panel so far. So I've extended this out so that it'll meet up with uh, this line here, which is where this is going to be cut off from. And then I'll come all the way up and join to the end of this. There'll be a little bit of excess on there. And then I can weld all the way down this seam. Oh, that needs a patch put in there weld around that and then I've got to make a little plate to fill that hole there and behind there I need to weld I don't know if you can see and then this will be cut back and welded straight to the uh, edge of this panel underneath here so I'll have to mark that cut that really neat and then go around and weld it all it's looking alright
Alright, so this is just a little um, infill panel to blank off the back edge of this. Piece in here. Stitch it down both sides. Pop your nan. So that panel's welded in. There's obviously this bit to repair here, but I'm just gonna wait till that's all blasted. This has got like two skins here, so I'm, I think I'll probably peel some of that back and then until it's good steel and then just weld it straight to the skin behind it. All right, so for this side, we've got the same deal here. We've got some rot. We need to get that down to the one one sort of skin there so we can weld to it. This obviously all needs cutting out and then strengthening in this back piece. Um, but I'm going to do the same as the other side, just extend it a bit further back so I can get rid of this rust here. Um, but I'm, I'm, all I'm doing basically is just trying to work out the fastest way to, to get this um, solid and um, get this rust out of it. I mean, if this was a restoration, you, like, I could spend a week just rebuilding all this section. If we were trying to put it back to like factory so that you could never see that it's had any repair work done, you know, you can, you can just go on and on and on, but this, this is a track car and it just needs to be done so that it's solid and as quick as possible. This is already going to add in so much time to this build. So that's, we're doing the same thing on this side, but just bring this plate back a bit further, stitch it a bit further back and then we'll do all this bit after it's been blasted. But we're just going to replicate exactly what was on the other side. So I'm going to cut this off in line with this and we'll go from there. All right, so this is my panel, same as before. This is my fold line here. And then I need a gap down the middle, which is flat so that that little piece you saw me make on the other side welds straight down in, in the middle of there to join the bulkhead to this. I've done an old video on an easy way of like, you know, working out some sort of patterns to lay out on your panels and the basics of using one of these so I'll put a link to that in the end if you're interested in seeing how I sort of just work out where to put the uh, pressings or shapings if it's if you're not trying to replicate like original panels you can just this is just an easy way of getting something on there that will look half decent Where this panel is a fraction longer, it's not quite going to clear on there, so I'll have to do it. Back it around that corner. That's it. And it just put like it puts so much strength into uh, into the panel. And the reason I I, I prefer this type of uh, pressing or die to use, where it steps the panel rather than where it actually rolls a bead, because the beads really warp the panel. Whereas this. I mean, that's still pretty straight.
Got this panel welded in. I'm gonna cut a bit of this out so it's just like a sort of 15 mil lip along the back of there. Just so that when it gets blasted, there's access to blast all inside this pillar. You can get at it from the uh, back in this side as well, just to make sure all the rust is out. But then I'm gonna put a piece in here and then a flat piece around here so that'll close that corner off. And then I've got to make a piece that will come off the top of that. So I'll have a flat piece coming across there and then it'll come up to that and then join to the top of that lip. And then that whole front section will be sealed off. This is all welded inside. All the way down. Still got to do the piece that will go on the back side of that, sort of come down the middle of here on this inside, like I did on the other one. But um, yeah, and then on the front here, this will be cut off flush with that, come all the way up to meet this, and then the cage will come through from where it's going to be just inside that pillow leg, straight through onto this plate, which will be flushed off here, and then we can put a plate from this lip down to that piece of roll cage tube with all the dimple dyed holes in it. Um, so the front end's like fixed now. It's nice and sturdy at the front. The back is still moving around so I think the next job is going to be to cut this off and then extend these chassis legs out to the back of this. Probably put a plate either side at the back of here um, and then bring these chassis legs and I could sheet the centre section of the floor um, just to put some strength into it all. And I'll probably just have two bolt holes on the back going through the plate and then I can make a rotisserie which will just bolt straight onto the back. Yeah so that's what I'm going to be starting tomorrow is going to be attacking the chassis legs at the back. All right, so that is it for this one. Yeah, more rust repairs and there's a lot more to do. I genuinely hate repairing rust. I've said it before, but I would rather shovel in the rain than uh, do rust repairs. So I'll be 
really glad when there's no more rust left in this. Yeah, the work I actually enjoy doing is kind of more the roll cage stuff, the heavier fabrication. Rust repairs to me are just, yeah, can't stand it. But it'll get there eventually, so, um, so yeah, back on it tomorrow. Gonna hit those chassis legs, hopefully get the back end of this thing straightened up and then, uh, yeah, we'll be getting somewhere then. So yeah, that is it for this one. Cheers for watching, see you tomorrow.